Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Chasing Squirrels Lab. In the lab, we talk with educators and creators and innovators that are using tools to help them energize their learning. Sometimes it's an activity, sometimes it's a piece of software, but it's definitely always going to be interesting. Enjoy the episode. All right, I'd like to welcome Stephen Hurley to the show. Welcome, Stephen. Thanks. It's nice to be with you, Chris. If you could, could you just throw down what um, a little bit about your background in education before we get rolling? Sure. So I uh, have been involved in education all my life uh, as a student. Uh, as a teacher, I <laughs> fell, fell into the profession and uh, have been involved with classrooms uh, for over 30 years. Officially retired from uh, the Dufferin Peel School District uh, four and a half years ago. And uh, the only reason I know I'm retired is that I get a pension check at the end of every month, but I'm busier now than I used to be on uh, trying to uh, support and nurture conversations about education to deepen and broaden this, this place uh, where these conversations do and uh, can continue to happen. So that's what I do. That's what I'm passionate I, about. I totally had a moment there where I thought you were going to say, when I was four... <laughs> Tell me about your background in education. Well, it all, it all started, started in a, a 10,000 watt radio station in Fresno, California. Yep. <laughs> that all works though. All right. So the heart of this program, the heart of this show is trying to get to some of the cool tools for either inspiration or creativity or productivity that educators are using to keep them interested in their own craft. So to that end, I would love for you to do a little bit of a throwdown about what sort of tools or tasks or um, could be digital, could be actual, but mm -hmm. what is it that's bringing out your creativity right now? So I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this because it gets me to think about it because sometimes you go through your day and you just do things without really being that reflective. Uh, so when you mention creativity, uh, one of the passions I have around creativity is what I think is the foundation of creativity and that's imagination. So some of the tools I use and I insist on using uh, have to do with nurturing and uh, continuing to keep fresh that thing called imagination in my own life. Uh, so if you look at my day, one of the uh, things, practices, I guess imaginative practices, uh, and many people won't think of it as an imaginative practice, but I like to read first thing in the morning and lately I've been uh, really loving this texture app. This one that gathers all sorts of magazines and articles for me and in your words sort of throws it down right in front of me at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, and so <laughs> I have been reading outside of education. I've been reading entrepreneurial stuff. I've been reading uh, business stuff. I've been reading uh, science stuff. And that has really captured my imagination. And it isn't long into that process where I will get an idea for uh, something else to, to, uh, to do a blog entry. Some of them never get written, but many of them appear on my whiteboard down in my office studio. And um, yeah, so that's so imagination is, is a big thing that I, I um, really try to n nurture. Uh, but I guess the heart of the question to me when I was thinking about it, uh, in order to talk about it, I, I really have, have had to come to terms with my own identity as um, some people would say a former teacher, I say a retired educator. And for me, that means just putting new rubber on the wheels. That's retiring for me. And uh, so I have um, come to see myself in the past uh, few years uh, as a storyteller and a gatherer of stories and a creator of spaces where stories can take place. And so a lot of the creative tools that I use and, and the, the tools for productivity have to do with the best ways to gather and present other people's stories. And uh, so I have a couple of examples. I'm not sure if you want me to keep going on that or whether you want to interject uh, some of the Chris Clough wisdom. No, I think that's fantastic. I love the I love the the starting point that you came from in order to get to that fresh thinking is to exist in spaces outside of education. So that texture app, this is something that uh, I am familiar with. I mean, it's multi-platform. 
And are you able to are you able to sample magazines before you actually hit the paywall? Is there a little bit of a uh, test drive on that one? Yeah, there was a ninety day uh, trial, and I think I'm paying for it now. I just, you know okay. you, you you get you subscribe to so many things these days you're never sure what you're actually paying for until the visa bill comes in but yeah i i had a, a trial run and uh i love i love uh reading i love uh i love thinking about reading uh i get excited when i go into a library i mean i get physically visibly excited my breathing changes and so to have all of this in front of me uh it has been amazing so, uh, but I get, I also get, uh, emails every day from texture saying, Hey, based on what you read before, here's something you may be interested in. And often it is, uh, something that's, that's interesting. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the beginning of my day. I, I, uh, and because I'm at my best when, uh, you know, at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, but, but I've been also, I have also been doing a lot of, uh, work over the past number of years in facilitating conversations and, uh, part of the energy around, uh, voice ed radio uh, is about nurturing those conversations. Uh, so I, um, you know, if you look at my uh, computer doc on my Mac, uh, the things that you'll find open most of the day are uh, GarageBand mm -hmm. and to a lesser extent, Final Cut Pro uh, and iTunes because those are the tools I use to bring stories together and very simple tools. Uh, I mean, Final Cut Pro is a little more complicated, uh, but uh, GarageBand to be able to take conversations uh, and, and weave them into uh, a story to me uh, is exciting. You know, it's interesting because it's what I used to do in my bedroom when I was 11 years old and 12 years old. That's where hmm. all this began. Uh, and I had a, a cassette tape deck eventually, and I had a splicing uh, dock from Radio Shack where you actually had to splice tape. Uh, I think you and I spoke of this, yeah. the sort of 45 degree angle. Yeah. You have your razor blade and it fits just so sweetly into that little, uh, uh, it's, yeah, no, With my friend, I did. Yeah, exactly. I did the exact same. And make sure you don't put that that cello tape on the wrong <laughs> side of the. Otherwise, you gap out. It's like, oh, where did that where did that sound bite go? I did the exact same thing when I was doing um, theater studies at the University of Guelph. So yeah, yeah, and it was it was state of the art. And and the exciting thing for me about GarageBand is you, it's the same it's the same metaphor, right? You're splicing uh, at the at the playhead, uh, mm -hmm. and you're bringing things together. And every time I do it. I think back to that Radio Shack splicer every time. That's it's, awesome. Uh, so, so the technology uh, for me, uh, the the uh, actions haven't changed, if you will. The the idea of um, fitting things together or creating a narrative that's always been with me. For some reason, the technology has made it easier. But you know what? Because I've had that experience of splicing it means something different to me than it does mm -hmm. to my 10 year old son who just cuts and brings it together. I mean, I, I, I think I appreciate it a lot more. Uh, so, and then, and then, uh, I think the, the iTunes, I love music. I'm very affected by music and the effect that that can have on telling a story. Uh, and so to find the right music, it doesn't always happen, but when you find it, and you listen back and the emotion, the emotional impact is there for you as the creator. Uh, you just hope that it's going to be there for, for the listener as well. Um, but in a sense, it doesn't matter because it's, you know, it's your creation. Uh, and then the final cut pro I've always, I've always been fascinated by video as well. And, uh, uh, this week on, on the, uh, the newly formed, voice ed radio game show i am actually defending the 16 millimeter film camera <laughs> that's awesome that the is reason awesome. i am and it goes back to the splicer too because because i used to do stop motion animation frame by frame by frame with a 16 millimeter and again got very excited about it i have a whole new appreciation for for the software that makes that uh that easier but I think um, 
it's almost like I know the roots of it. And so I can understand it better. Um, so, so th- you may sense that there's a whole, there's a different, there are different levels to my creative, uh, uh, I'm not going to say genius, but my creative energy. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a level of understanding the tool and what that's, and appreciating the tool. And uh, then there's that level of storytelling and, and participating in uh, the creation of a story. And as Tom King, uh, the Canadian uh, writer, always says, the truth about stories is that's all we are. So when I sit down and talk to people like you do, uh, I'm not just creating a podcast or a piece of media. I'm actually listening to and listening deeply to a story. And to me, that is a gift. Couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. I've always, I'm always blown away whenever I ask someone to talk on the podcast and their general lead is I'm so honored that you would want to talk to me. And I think to myself, you don't get it. Like I, I am so curious about your process that I don't, I mean, I don't have an Uber word beyond honored, but they're sort of throwing back this. It's a strange sort of flip flop because that's, beyond where I'm at. And when they do share their story, I feel like I'm there. I'm there with them. Well, it's a, it's a moment. Um, I think a moment for you as the listener and the storyteller, it's a moment of vulnerability and it's a moment of intimacy and in a world that, uh, connects so quickly and often so superficially, uh, it's a moment to treasure. And that sounds, that sounds kind of intense and it is intense. Uh, so for me, the technology is w- what allows us to connect, but also to, to um, walk around that story even after the conversation and then put something out uh, that hopefully honors the story, but has a little bit of you as the creator in there as well. I love that. Um, I love that you, I mean, you're raising the, raising the sort of like the, it's not the value, it's raising the, um, I don't know, I feel like some, like almost like, I want to use like a fission fusion kind of an analogy, but I'm not smart enough to talk about nuclear physics, but it's like the, it's that moment of where you realize that something's about to happen and the story's about to come out and I'm so happy that I'm here. And I want to swing that. I want to swing that and just I want to close with a question for you because this is I think this might be key for some of the people that are listening. They're like, okay, well, maybe I'm going to check out this texture. Maybe I can sort of think outside the box or I'm going to grab GarageBand and give it a ride. Maybe I can just, you know, record my kids saying something. But I'm curious about in your creative process, which I understand is it, it can be there's a lot there's a lot of moving pieces to that. Mm-hmm. But would you would you be able to just kind of focus on one part of your creative process and and tell me tell us in in your view what is the most fragile part of the creative process because i've met people that will say i just want to try that thing because it's i I don't want it to go wrong and then you jump in and you realize that's that's the least of the concerns there's so many other little things that you could pay attention to so in your sound producing in your storytelling in your blending Techno, uh, tech with analog tools and just being in the room with the story what's the most fragile part for you that's a really difficult question because, because I, <laughs> you're forcing me to pull apart the whole process and sort of take a look at it it's uh, uh, but I think I think the most fragile part of the process I can talk about that just a bit uh, is just before I think I'm finished mm. Mm-hmm. Because most of the things in my life, whether it's writing an essay, uh, producing a podcast, uh, composing a song, most of the things I do, I completely throw out at the last minute. Mm. And, and I start again. Wow. Because it just doesn't seem right. I, d- I did my, uh, my Master's of Education program about 10 years ago, and my final paper thesis... Um, I threw everything out two days before it was due and I started again and I do that often I don't edit I just trash (laughs) 
Um, so <laughs> that's awesome. No, so that's, that's so hardcore. That's so hardcore. I love it. So that's that's uh, that's a that's a fault of mine, or it's but it always tur- the final product always turns out differently because of that because you bring fresh eyes to it, and it always has to be early in the morning. So uh, I throw it out at night. I get up early in the morning and I do it again. I love it. I love it. How about uh, I do have one more thing? One piece of advice: give it to somebody who's just starting out, grabbing one of those one of those pieces of software in order to do some storytelling. Can you throw down just a FYI or a watch out for this or just be aware that this thing does this thing? Could you give a, a little bit of words of advice? No. Okay. <laughs> what I I'm, love, no. My word of advice is get in there and play with it and try to break it. Uh, with GarageBand, a technical thing, I, 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 it drives me crazy when... Um, mic levels aren't right and you get clipping that's when the the sound get is too loud and you can't pull it back uh so i would start softer rather than louder i love it and that's that's metaphorical and it's a real piece of advice as well that's awesome well steven thank you i totally this is there's definitely a long form conversation in here and just for you to sort of give a little glimpse at your storytelling. I appreciate it. And my thousands of listeners are just hanging on that moment. Thousands of us. The Twitter feed is clicking off the thing. But anyways, (laughs) thank you. (laughs) Thank you for jumping in on this. I really do appreciate your time and for you to share your thinking and your creative process with me. It's a pleasure. And I'm looking forward to hearing uh, other people weigh in on on, uh, their process as well. This is a great idea. Thanks, Chris. You definitely will. Have a fantastic evening. You too. Chasing Squirrels Lab can be found on iTunes with the rest of the Chasing Squirrels podcast episodes. You can also contact me at chrisjclough at gmail. And if you want to get a quick contact, throw me a tweet at the exact same handle. Thank you for spending time with me.